I think the number one question I get asked as a personal trainer is how do I stay motivated? So I wanted to make this video because we're a couple weeks into 2023 and now is around the time when we start to struggle with our New Year's resolutions. So maybe we made a really great goal but it's starting to really start to feel hard or maybe we didn't make such a great goal and we're just sort of losing our motivation and we don't care anymore. So I want to talk about some tips of how to stay motivated in 2023. But before we get into it, I want to talk about Magic Mind. So if you've watched my previous videos, you've probably heard me talk about Magic Mind. So this is not your typical energy drink. It's formulated with nootropics, matcha, honey, adaptogens, things like L-theanine and ashwagandha to help reduce stress. And it's designed to help you stay um, productive, which for our video, talking about how to stay motivated is very on brand. Um, so I've been drinking these for a about a little over two weeks now and I'm seeing really great levels of productivity when I drink this in the morning or the mid late afternoon. This is great because it's a quick and easy shot so if I'm in a rush I can just quickly take it or I can sip it whatever you prefer but it's super easy and convenient and it really helps me stay focused and productive so if you want to give it a shot you can use the link in my description box for 20% off. Okay, so motivation. I think it's interesting because we kind of think of motivation as something that we can just will into existence or we beat ourselves up if we're not motivated 100% of the time, like, oh, I'm not disciplined enough, I'm not whatever enough, I'm not enough if we're not motivated. And I think that's kind of silly because motivation is a feeling just like anything else. You can't will yourself to feel happy and you don't beat yourself up when you're not happy. You will understand, or at least I hope you would understand, that it's an emotion just like anything else and we really don't have control over it. All we can do is set up our environment and the circumstances in our life to become a breeding ground for that emotion. And so I think that's how we need to look at motivation. So what we're talking about is self-determination theory and this is what it's defined as at, on selfdeterminationtheory.org. SDT represents a broad framework for the study of human motivation and personality. So there's been lots of different studies on it, um, and like anything, it is just a theory. It's one way of thinking about things. So if something else works for you, that doesn't mean that that thing is wrong. That works for you and you should keep doing it, but if you want to look at things a little differently or explore different ways of thinking, um, then that's where we can look to self-determination theory. And this is a quote from a study that I will cite. The results show consistent support for a positive relation between more autonomous forms of motivation and exercise, with a trend towards intrinsic motivation being more predictive of long-term exercise adherence. So we're talking about long-term, big picture, um, extrinsic, and we're going to talk about this in more detail, has been linked to um, more short-term exercise adherence, so it could work for the short term, but I'm talking about motivation for the long run. You know, people who really want to live life in a sustainable way and they want goals that are going to serve them for the rest of their life. So that's what we're going to talk about. I think we should look at it like a spectrum. On one end, we have extrinsic motivation, and on the other end, we have intrinsic motivation. So if you think about extrinsic motivation, it's something that you don't value what you're actually doing, but you're maybe worried about the circumstances, and so you do the thing anyway. It's like if you're a young kid and your parent told you, oh, you need to clean up, and you don't care about cleaning, you don't wanna do any cleaning, but you know if you don't, your parent is gonna yell at you, or you're gonna be punished, or you're gonna suffer the consequences. So you do the thing anyway. That is an extrinsic motivation. When it comes to self-motivation, it's not a good thing to rely on um, because it, it places no value on the actual thing itself. And if you take away that outside threat of, in this case, the parent punishing you, you will not do whatever it is you're trying to do. So on the other end of the spectrum, we have intrinsic motivation. So let's say cleaning actually brings you a lot of joy. It helps you de-stress. It's something that makes you feel satisfied and happy. Now, this would be intrinsically motivating because it doesn't matter if there's a parent there to yell at you or punish you. Because if you took that away, you would still want to do the activity and you would still enjoy it. 
So for example, if we look at someone who has a goal of weight loss and they're struggling to stay motivated, I would have them look at, are they extrinsically or intrinsically motivated to lose weight? If it's extrinsic, they might be wanting to lose weight because people might treat them better, which is totally valid, but that's extrinsic. If, the, if it's intrinsic, they want to lose weight so that they can feel better, so that they can have more energy, so that they can, you know, walk around with more confidence, um, so that their health can be better and that they can live longer. That, that's all intrinsic. So I would have someone examine where they are in relation to those two things and is there a way that they can shift to a more intrinsic motivation? And if they can't, then maybe that's not the right goal for them and they need to reassess what's actually more in line with their values and what's gonna make them happy. I also feel like it's very easy to um, see someone on social media that maybe you admire how they look or how they live their life and they just seem motivated all the time and so you know you you might ask them how do you stay motivated and they're just like oh it's discipline or whatever it is like I'm somebody who it's like 50 50 half of the time I'm motivated to exercise just because I enjoy exercise it's intrinsic for me because I find it enjoyable and satisfying and then there are other times where it's extrinsic and I know that oh I just have to do this because it's part of my program and it serves the greater purpose uh, and you know I, I might not feel motivated all the time but it's not a matter of discipline some people just really enjoy exercise and therefore it's intrinsic and so you might have set up your life and your circumstances in a way that the things that you need to do to hit your goal are things that you don't enjoy, things that don't make you happy. And therefore it's never gonna be intrinsic and it's never gonna be a matter of discipline. And I would add that your overarching goal in sort of the greater scheme of things can be intrinsically motivating, but you have to consider other factors. So you might know that you need to exercise in order to hit your goal, but you tried working out in a gym and you really didn't like it. Maybe you're an extrovert and it just kind of felt lonely and boring. So instead of doing that exercise program alone, you could join a workout class for that community and that connectedness. And all of a sudden you might find that you're way more motivated and excited to go to that exercise class because yes, it's working you towards your goals, but it's playing into the psychological and emotional factors that you as an individual need. So part of this is also knowing who you are and what serves you and what what makes you feel satisfied. And so if you're someone who likes to be in big group settings and you like to be around other people, maybe you like exercise, but exercising alone doesn't feel good. Or it could be the opposite. Maybe you're an introvert and you really don't feel good around other people and it drains your social battery. Then an exercise session alone will probably make you feel so much better than an exercise class. So you need to set up your, your goals and how you're gonna achieve your goals while considering all those factors. And you can apply this to nutrition too. So let's say you're trying to eat in a more healthy way to hit your goal of weight loss. If you're someone who hates cooking because you live alone and maybe it's new that you're living alone and it makes you sad, the act of cooking can really just like bum you out and you're not gonna wanna do it and you're gonna end up um, ordering in. You have to know that about yourself and so therefore be able to make decisions around food that are in line with your values as a person. So maybe you know, okay, I need a meal delivery service or I need something that relies on very little cooking, something that is gonna work for you and your lifestyle, instead of just looking at some um, someone on social media and saying, oh, well, they're cooking, so I have to cook too because they're successful, and the only way I can be successful is if I copy what they do. A big downfall for a lot of people is that we look to social media for motivation instead of looking at ourselves for motivation. And that's where you're gonna find the biggest shift of like, okay, that over there on social media might be nice to look at. It's aesthetically pleasing. Um, it's all of these things that we imagine our lives should look like. But if we don't take into consideration how we actually live and what we actually value, our motivation is going to tank. To recap and to put this into action, if you're somebody who struggles with motivation, start with your goal. Look at your goal and figure out, is it extrinsic, is it intrinsic? And try to shift it to an intrinsic place. And if you can't shift it, then be honest with yourself and shift your goal. And that's really hard. That's not an easy thing to do. But 
I think it'll really serve you in the long run. So try to shift it to intrinsic or change your goal and then really look at who you are as a person and know who you are, collect data about who you are. That's like the biggest thing I tell my clients is collect data about yourself so that you know what works for you, what doesn't work for you and set up your environment to breed motivation it's editing me. I feel like I didn't go into enough detail before I ended that thought. So when I say set up your life and your environment to breed motivation, I'm talking about you have your intrinsic goal. Now you need to come up with your plan of action. Those actions are what's making up your circumstances. So your um, workouts need to be something that work for you personally and bring you some satisfaction or joy or community connection or something and if they're not doing that then you need to realign that and figure out how can I pick a form of exercise that gives me sat satisfaction, autonomy, that's a big one, um, connectedness and then food, know enough about yourself and your values to know am I going to cook? If I'm not going to cook, what am I going to do to meet my nutritional needs to hit my goal? Am I going to order out? Is it a meal delivery service? Whatever it is. So that's what I'm talking about when I say set up your environment to breed motivation. If, it, if your environment, your plan is full of stuff that you hate, that makes you unhappy, that doesn't make you feel more connected to people you care about, that doesn't give you independence or autonomy, you will not continue to do it and you will not stay motivated. So I really hope this was helpful and if you have any other questions, please leave them in the description box so we can chat about it in more detail. But like I said in the beginning, it's just a theory. It's one way of thinking of things. It's not the be all end all. So take it as such um, and give it a try if you want to apply it to your own life. And don't forget, if you want to try Magic Mind, you can use the link in my description box for 20% off. I completely forgot to mention, if you want to work with me, you can apply at the link in my description box. If this sounds really interesting, um, but you want a little bit more guidance, I'd be happy to take you through my program um, in a more guided and coaching dynamic relationship. So you can check that out below.